Shut up and sit down. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode one of Third Shift, a Gearbox podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Eric, and with me today is my co-host, Matt. Matt, how the hell are you doing? I'm doing all right. You know, a little bit stressed, a little bit nervous trying to get this podcast thing off the ground, but, uh, you know, I've been playing a lot of Battleborn, having a lot of fun this week, so uh, what about yourself? Oh, yeah, much the same, good sir. You know, just struggling over here trying to figure out what works for this podcast, <laughs> and uh, in the meantime, trying to play catch-up on Battleborn mm. since we were uh, late bloomers to the game. Yeah, Paris. And that's uh, about it this week. So that's uh, what's up with us this week. Uh, so next we're going to talk about what's up with Gearbox this week. Uh, obviously, they've been releasing a couple shift codes for uh, Borderlands, the Handsome Collection, uh, Borderlands 2, you know, all that good stuff. And uh, one shift code, I believe, for Battleborn. And you can find those for right now. Just go, you know, check out Gearbox's Facebook and Twitter. Uh, once we're up and rolling, we're going to be uh, grabbing those shift codes and putting them in the show notes for you guys. And uh, we'll be retweeting them from our Twitter account anytime we see those. Yep. Um, and just as a side note there, uh, you can also find them. Just go to Google, Reddit, all those other places. You guys know where to go. They're mm-hmm. up all over the place. So definitely dive in, go grab those up, because yep. who doesn't want free loot? And I think I even saw a uh, a thread for it on uh, the uh, the Gearbox official forums. So every, everyone out there who sees them, they're all grabbing them, put them up, putting them together, and we're going to do that for you guys too. So... Any, anywhere you see them, grab them up. Just like you said, who doesn't want free loot? Exactly. Mm-hmm. So uh, in addition to that, obviously, while we're recording this right now, they've dropped the battle plan. So that'll be yesterday for you guys which, once uh, you're hearing this. So every week we'll be going over, you know, just what's in the battle plan, any pertinent inf- information we think you guys need to know. Uh, there was a lot of stuff this week. Um, First off, they threw in a couple hot fixes, little minor tweaks to uh, some stats on gear, like little 0.5%, 1% attack damage, attack speed, a couple other stats like that. Uh, if you're interested in that stuff, it's up on the battle plan. I'm sure you guys can find it. We're not going to go too deep into that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, we're definitely not uh, on the caliber to talk about that in detail. You can go look it up for yourself and decide what you think of that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really going to notice a point five percent decrease in my attack damage no i'm I'm not that good that's exactly (laughs) so uh the big thing this week was they announced the details of the loot apocalypse which they had initially announced last in last week's battle plan that that was coming up um so for story mode that's going to give you uh upped legendary drop rates and uh major enemies are going to have a chance to drop even better gear for you so yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been itching to get my crew into uh, some story modes to get more legendaries because yeah. I only have like nine or ten, and uh, I've seen uh, loadouts with a ton of them in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, frankly, I want it. Who doesn't want the legendary loot? So uh, definitely looking forward to the increased drop rates, and it's finally an excuse to get everybody into the advanced modes, mm-hmm. seeing as how I'm just a casual scrub and I've only been doing the normals. Yeah. Please don't judge me. Yeah. It's, it's, please don't judge us. But, uh, yeah, just like you, I'm I'm looking forward to getting a lot more legendaries. I've finally got a three legendary build for my Oscar Mike, which last time I used it was pretty damn good. So I would like to get a, a, a plethora of legendaries so I can actually make really good builds for, you know, my Reyna, my, my Melka, you know, tanky characters that I want to play. You know, because right now I can kind of fiddle around. I've got maybe one legendary and then an epic and... You know, sometimes even a white if it's, you know, something I can pull off and activate real quick. Uh Uh-huh. Yep, yep. And don't forget that uh, some of those epics are pretty darn epic there too, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. So those are worth looking at. They're not just garbage. Yeah, that's that's one thing that I think Well, maybe I initially had a little bit of an issue with, and I don't know if other players will too, but he's saying, oh, it's legendary. I should just put all those in all my slots. But, you know, cost versus Reward. benefit, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why in uh, in my healer build, I have a white shards per second item. Because as soon as I get that, it goes on, then I'm making money like no tomorrow. Exactly. 
So uh, the other thing they announced in the loot apocalypse has to do with loot packs. So your rare and epic loot packs are going to have a better chance to get you higher rarity gear. So you're going to be getting more purples, more legendaries out of those. And in addition to that, I think the part that we're all excited about, well, both of us over here, is uh, loot pack cost is going down. So for the duration of the loot apocalypse, rare and epic loot packs are going to be down 25%, 25% cheaper for you. Oh, yeah. And then uh, 50%... For the uh, the class ones, right? The uh, the faction packs, yeah. Faction packs, that, exactly. That, and that's the one that I know I am super excited about. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to that a lot because uh, I'm sure you have too. I've been saving up my credits because, mm. uh, you know, I'm stingy and frankly yeah, yeah. want uh, the most bang for my buck. Mm. And sure enough, they went ahead and announced this. And last week, if you remember, they didn't really say exactly what they were going to do, but we had right. all just assumed, I'm sure, that it was just going to be from story mode stuff. Mm. Uh, so when they went ahead and told us that uh, you could also get the loot packs for extra cheap, and not only that, they would have a, uh, an extra chance to drop the loot, mm-hmm. well, that's just a win-win right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely glad that they... Uh, that they made the faction packs cheaper because those are just my favorite to pop open. Because, uh, like you and I have said before off air, I can I can open a faction pack and if I get a taunt or a skin, I don't care what else is in it. I yeah, could get, that's just a win. I could get complete garbage. You know, oh, I'm selling that. I'm selling that. They're completely useless. But hey, Wrath's pink now, or Boulder looks crazy in purple. Uh huh. Yep, anytime I get skins or taunts, I'm happy. Mm-hmm. You know, I know loot's the bigger deal in the end game because that's what makes you better, mm-hmm. but who the hell doesn't want some awesome skins and taunts? Who really wants to be that hobo? Oh, I haven't played Wrath before, so I'm going to play and I'm going to look like default Wrath. Boring. Yeah, because we all know that skin matters. <laughs> that's right. Uh, you can't be a hobo, man. That's right. You gotta, you gotta look sharp. Mm-hmm. You gotta look good for the masses. You can't go to work looking the same every day. You can't be Howard. You can Come do on. that. You can totally do that. No. Disregard him. No, you can't. No, yes. don't do that. Scrub for life. <laughs> Hashtag scrub for life. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Oh, my God. And so what else have they got, Matt? There's obviously one thing uh, you haven't mentioned yet. That's, that's true. That's true. I, I almost forgot. Uh, they announced for season pass holders, you'll be getting two new skins there in your little command section. One for our girl Alani. It's uh, a, her gold skin is going to be popping in there for you. And uh, one more for Toby. They said it was uh, described it as a cyber skin. It looks kind of silverish. It looks pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely excited about the Alani one because that is who I main. Mm-hmm. And for all you haters out there, don't judge. She's wonderful. I, I love her I, very, I, very much. I hate her when you're not Alani. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Any any person I face, I, I hate mm-hmm, any Alani. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to getting her gold skin. I was wondering when they were going to pull that sucker out, mm-hmm. seeing as how they've got so many of the others out already. Uh, it's about darn time. And, and I'm definitely glad that... Uh, even I think some of the pre-order bonus skins came out as ones you can buy with platinum. Like I know Thorn's golden skin, Wrath's golden skin have both come out. Yeah. I, I you know we we jumped on Battleborn a little bit late. You know a few months down the road, so we didn't get the pre-order bonus golden skins. So I'm definitely glad to see that. You know for scrubs like us, you can pick them up. Exactly. And then the other thing that they announced. Oh, yes. I was wrong. There was two things. There were two things. Oh, darn. (laughs) I almost forgot myself. Mm -hmm. But uh, the other thing they announced is something that's going on right now as we're recording this. uh, We get to miss it while we tell you guys all about it. (laughs) Boo-hoo, boo-hoo. So uh, they're running a live stream on Twitch uh, on the Gearbox Software's official Twitch channel showing off the broadcaster tools that will be coming to everyone somewhere down the line. And most exciting, during this stream, I mean, not that that's not exciting, but uh, during that they'll also be showing the three new maps that are going to be coming. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to take a peek after we're done with this whole show tonight Mm -hmm. and see what these wonderful Meltdown capture and incursion maps look like. Uh, and how they play, because I'm assuming since the developers are going to be on there playing, we're going to see some pretty good gameplay mm-hmm. and a good idea of where to go, where not to go, and the lanes, etc. Yeah, I, I definitely hope we'll be seeing some, uh, you know, 
some high level strategies, some like, oh, here's a little sneakeroo hiding spot you wouldn't have thought of to, you know. Almost like a little uh, guide to yeah. the map as yeah. they're playing. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for too. Obviously, you're all going to already know, so we won't really talk about it much. Because mm. um, as of hearing this, you'll have already seen, and it won't say, matter. I going to say, not that we can talk about it very much, because we can't see it right now exactly. in this empty room of nothing. But on a quick side note too, the, um, the whole thing that's going to help them with the uh, competitive play and getting live feeds up there and allowing people to mm. check out these uh, highly competitive games oh, yeah, in yeah. a spectator mode, that is pretty darn cool. And, mm. in fact, it would be nice even for myself. Sometimes I'll come in and my team will already be in a match. Well, instead of just sitting in my command center forever, I can actually yeah. go into spectator mode and just watch what they're doing, make fun of them, and, you know, generally just be annoying and abusive mm. to my friends. Do a little fly-through and ask why, why person X is off uh, just staring at the wall, Brian. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> uh, like I was saying, that's live right now as we're recording this. So when you guys hear this, I'm sure they'll have the archive stream up on their Twitch channel or uh, on their YouTube channel. See chunks and bits and pieces of it. I'm sure you'll be able to find it up there. Exactly. Uh, and speaking of that, uh, today we wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the recent changes they did with the PvP matchmaking. Uh, was uh, last week they went ahead and talked about wanting to do some changes and hopefully making mm-hmm. the queues a bit better, yep. um, the experience better uh, for casuals and uh, for the competitive scene. Mm-hmm. Um, so what they did was they went ahead and got rid of the incursion, the o- the uh, goodness gracious meltdown, yeah. meltdown. Thank you, sir, and, and capture. And capture. <laughs> <laughs> They went ahead and got rid of the usual incursion, meltdown, and capture, and instead replaced it mm. with the spotlight, the casual play, and the competitive play. Mm. And for those of you who don't know, which probably none of you. I'm sure anyone who's listened to this podcast probably was playing at that point. You think but so? You never You're know. You're sure? I'm not sure. Might be some Borderlands I'm guys sure. in here or just. Uh, hey, you know. More power to them. See, yeah. that's why we're giving them the backstory. Exactly. Here. Exactly. Okay. So anyways, the spotlight, real briefly, was simply one random map chosen every day, and it went ahead and used the matchmaking and uh, competitive play uh, mode in that. Which was a more skill-based. It, it looked at your wins, losses, maybe KD a little bit, but it, was, it wasn't just get you in a match fast as possible. It was get you in a good match with people around your skill level. Exactly. And then, in theory, because of the heightened wait times, because of having to match you, they were offering extra bonus credits and rep. Mm -hmm. Um, The second one was the casual play, and in the casual play, it was simply first come, first serve, get you into a map as quick as possible uh, so you could enjoy the game. That was called... uh get uh, curb stomped by teams of five players yes just, well uh, apparently I, I, I will say i didn't notice it that much but i did notice it at times so yeah i think i had one or two matches myself that mm. were that but for the most part i felt it was not that bad honestly i yeah. enjoyed it well, well plus i think uh like they were saying a lot of those competitive teams prefer certain maps so if that was in the spotlight battle that's where they all went yeah so in the casual play would just be you know, randos. Mm-hmm. So. Dead in the water, etc. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then lastly was the competitive play. And in that, once again, it used skill-based uh, matchmaking to mm-hmm. place those into a round. And what they did with the maps, too, we didn't mention this with the others, mm-hmm. but what they oh, did yeah, with yeah. the competitive play was they put uh, the three most popular maps mm-hmm. up for picking. And this is where a lot of the problem came in was people were yeah. upset because incursion overgrowth is just predominantly the the choice of everyone mm-hmm. wanting to play competitively yeah. and it was randomly there sometimes and that bothered a lot of people hoping for a mm-hmm. good competition there are a lot of people who love that like seemingly way too much in my opinion i like having the, the variety there so if that was the one thing you wanted to play then you were kind of out of luck mm-hmm. but I mean, for me, I'll, I'll play anything on anything. I don't care. Well, I'm pretty much the same way. Mm. I mean, I have my issues with capture, but... Well, of course you we'll did. We'll talk about that yeah. in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but anywho, 
They attempted that for three days, I believe it was, from the Thursday to Saturday at some point in time. I, I think it was maybe a little, I'll, I'll give them a little more credit. I think it was maybe four or five. Was it, it, four? Fe- it felt like, because it felt like the biggest chunk of that week. Because when we came home on Friday, that's when we heard, that, oh, they changed it all back up again. So I think. I think it, w- it was at least the, mo- the majority of a week. Was but it a full week? Okay. I don't think it was a full week, but anyway. We'll give it to him. Yeah, we'll yeah, give yeah. it to him. Either way, it was really quick, mm-hmm. and it, it originally baffled me because I mm-hmm. just feel like how much data could you have uh, gotten out of that mm-hmm. with only just a week of taking a peek at it? Yeah. Um, going to the forums, though, I seen that there was just an overwhelming... Um, outcry for things to go back to the way they were Mm -hmm. due to the fact everyone enjoyed their incursion overgrowth yeah as i've said before and as we'll say later i i don't understand it i don't i don't get it i just want to play one mode one map all the time forever yeah Yeah. i don't i personally don't get that either Mm -hmm. being competitive wouldn't you want to excel at every map Mm -hmm. wouldn't you want to know what you're doing on meltdown on capture regardless of whether they're your favorite or not Mm -hmm. and also not only that but what about Echelon for Incursion? That, yeah. I, I think that map is pretty fantastic, mm-hmm. actually. And it, it's a shame that nobody seems to want to play on that one. Yeah, it's it's definitely my favorite out of the two. I mean, uh, as we've said so many times off air, you know, I feel like there's just the... It's more complex, all the different ways you can get in and out of situations. I mean, there's five different paths into that double thrall area. There's the two, you know, relatively safe ones from... Mm-hmm you know, your spawn areas. Then there's the ones just, you know, at the bases of the bridge, which you can sneak around, sneak a poo, you know, pull an ambush on somebody. Then there's the one that comes right down in the tunnel. So you can, I mean, if you're agile or if you're a stealth character, if you're Oscar Mike, pop your invis, just run around, get behind everybody, cause some damage, you know, or if you're a Benedict, hide down underneath the bridge, pop your, you know, fly up, and then you're, you can go anywhere. It's, I don't know. It's a lot more interesting. It's a lot, a lot more fun to me. Mm-hmm. I, I just love that map. Yeah. Well, don't get me wrong. I enjoy the heck out of Overgrowth as well. Yeah, yeah. But I really don't feel that it's better in any significant way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't done a lot of forum searching for why people have chosen Overgrowth as the main one. Mm-hmm. I would assume it's just because of the simple lane structure it has going for it. Yeah. Uh, so it basically it just comes down to... Uh, Team play, you know, the best yeah. team wins. And, I, you know, I get it. That makes some sense in competitive play. Mm-hmm. But I love the random element that, like, Echelon provides where mm-hmm. you can, as you said, sneak around. You, you got different options to get where you want to go. Yeah. And I feel like that just is a lot more fun in the end of it. I think it's definitely a more versatile map. It gives you a more versatile game experience. Because if you're, if you're losing on overgrowth, they've pushed you back to your sentry, basically. And then they have the run of the double thralls because you can't, you know, you have the entryway to them, but you can't get out of there safely. No, if the it, other team is there yeah, playing, it, you're not coming out alive unless you have some sort of uh, Kelvin ability mm. that allows you to sneak around. Or, you know, you've got an Oscar Mike with an invis, but you can't take out the double thrall on your own anyway, so no. you're just wasting time in there. Well, you shouldn't say anyways. I'm sure there's some players out there, Matt, who can and do all the time. Well, I'm sure, but... Casuals. I'm not that let's, player. So. I was going to say, let's, <laughs> let's say casuals are not going to go in there and do that double thrall mm. solo unless they're... Uh, well, I, I'll give you, you could do it with, with a buddy, a healer or a, somebody to soak oh, up yeah, that damage because Oscar Mike's not, not a tanky guy. Mm-hmm. Like I've always said, he can lay out the sustained damage, but he can't take a lot. Mm. And those two thralls can dish out a lot. Mm-hmm. So... so that's our thoughts there on the Echelon mm. overgrowth thing. But in general, they gave it a few days, mm-hmm. maybe a week, close to it. I feel like they should have given it more time because yeah. I personally was really enjoying the fact that every day was a random map mm-hmm. on the spotlight. And you could go in there and queue up, learn how to play capture a little bit better because there mm. seems to be a woefully few people who can play <laughs> that mode decently. Yeah, yeah. It is atrocious, in my opinion, mm-hmm. uh, the people I see playing on that friggin' mode. Mm-hmm. Oh, goodness gracious. As we've said off air, you know, so many times, it's almost like if you're trying to play Call of Duty in that uh, point capture mode there. Everyone just runs around and fights each other. Nobody pays attention to the, the points that are there, or one team will get them, and then everyone will just... Meet in Bravo. Yeah, meet up at Bravo and just, and just fight. Fight, 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 fight. I'm going to mark Bravo in case you don't know. 
we're all fighting here. Yeah. Quit capturing points and getting us actual points. Let's just fight on Bravo. And then when you try to break away, you're getting all sorts of PS messages. Mm. Like, what are you doing, Nublet? Come fight here. And uh, it's like, uh, I'm trying to achieve a win by um, getting the points, which is the purpose to, of the mode. Trying to actually play the game the way it's supposed to be yes. played. Yeah, exactly. But either way, it gives people a chance to play different maps, different mm. modes, which I thought was awesome. Mm. You know, it gets tiresome always going to incursion because, of yeah. course, your wait time in incursion is short, whereas mm. the other two is average to long depending on the day and time yeah. hour you're on. Mm. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. And then to wrap it up, though, I do see the other side. Mm. Uh, they did switch it back um, yeah. because everybody demanded they switch it back. So mm. we're obviously in the vocal minority mm. in our likening of the uh, new system. And mm. I see the merits in it. Yeah, I see yeah. and understand that if you want to play Incursion Overgrowth, you should be able to play Incursion Overgrowth and mm-hmm. shouldn't be penalized for doing so. And, and you know, there's sometimes, even if I don't just want to play Incursion Overgrowth, but I definitely want to play a Meltdown map. And if I go into, you know, a queue with everybody of my skill level and everybody else in that match wants to play Incursion, wants to play Capture, well, now there's no guarantee that I can play my Meltdown or... Uh, you know, any other mode that I want to queue up for. So I do, I do like the new slash old system of being able to queue up for just the match types you want. But uh-huh. like you said, I think taking away the definite competitive skill-based, you know, yeah. queuing, I, I think it hurts it a little bit. Because I definitely do. Because we've been lately, you know, last few times I've been playing, there's that pre-made of five 100s who are just going to boop, pop right in. Oh, yeah, we're going to have a... We're going to have a and tough you're time. you're done, exactly. Yeah. And I want to elaborate a touch on that because, uh, just like you just said, uh, I can't tell you how many matches I keep going in. And I play solo, you know, quite mm-hmm. a bit. Uh, I get out of work, try to get in a match or two without uh, Matt or any of my other friends on. Yep, yep. And every time it seems like uh, it says it takes in your skill and tries to match you up at least in a loose end, but I feel like I always end up with a much weaker team and then there's a much stronger team against us. Oh, yeah. And, you know, maybe it's just I suck. I don't know. I don't think I suck that bad. <laughs> but we seem to get pretty wrecked each and every time. Mm-hmm. And I felt when the uh, competitive play was going on, I felt like those matches were wonderful. I yeah. loved them. I, I really felt like they were 50-50, mm-hmm. and they were coming to some just deadpan endings. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Because I, I play a lot solo, too, right when I get out of work before you can get on. I'll pop on, do a couple matches. And, you know, even when we're doing it, you know, just a two-man, we seem to get stronger teams against us than than we are even with our team. But, uh, you know, I, th- I think a, a lot of it, I think, comes down to your luck and you bringing bad luck to the team. That's as, true. As always happens. I always because I, I find that I will have, like, one raffle stomp match and we'll just get destroyed then everyone will leave the queue, and they'll get popped back in, and I'll be with, you know, three 100s who are, you know, actually utilizing teamwork, and we'll be up against, you know, a bunch of randos, and we'll stop them. So I don't know. I, I, I can see it both ways because I, I have it both ways. But when I'm, when I'm solo, it feels like I get a more, more balanced than when you're doing teams. Yeah. Well, that might be a factor, though. If, mm-hmm. if me and you are together or me, you, and Brian or a couple other people we play with regularly mm-hmm. – uh, if we're on together, I think maybe it takes into account we're a team and then tries to match us up with either A, single players that would be an above average skill level to mm-hmm. compensate or yeah. other teams, obviously. Yeah, I, I definitely can see that because, like you said, it definitely seems like when we're a team, we get spotted up against five mans a lot. Yeah, I see that mm-hmm. quite often. So that may be the whole reason behind it. But as you said earlier, and for those who don't know, I just have terrible luck. So I really don't uh, have any hope <laughs> for for coming out of the uh, patch I'm in and just getting matched up and destroyed every single time. This is the man who, anytime we would play Borderlands, oh, this guy definitely drops a legendary. Oh, come on, Eric, let's go farm it. Hey, what's he dropping? Greens, perps, blues. Over oh, and over. I'll, I'll go do it by myself. Legendary, 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 legendary. Yes. Let me put it this way. We played years and years of Borderlands. Yeah. And I can count on my two digits, my two <laughs> fingers, excuse me, <laughs> how many legendaries I have accrued over mm, those years. Yeah. So, yes, terrible luck. <laughs> Hence, going back to the old uh, mm. 
a uh, bit of the battle plan. I'm yeah. very excited about getting in there this weekend with these significantly uh, increased drop rates mm. and hoping to get some of these friggin' legendaries I don't have mm. uh, so I can be more competitive on the PvP side of things here. Yeah, definitely. And I think I, I think even your bad luck can't ruin that for us. No. Because lately we've been, you know, when we do a story, we'll pick up a legendary, you, probably about one a night, I, I find, anyway. Oh, yeah. I yeah. would say it's at least one a night. Yeah, mm-hmm. doing pretty good. Yeah, so with the up drop rates, it should definitely help us out in that mm-hmm. in that respect. All righty. Well, for today, that's going to go ahead and uh, take care of things. Mm-hmm. Um, as we've said before, uh, we will cover anything relevant with Gearbox. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if Borderlands has any sort of announcements or anything going on, we'll make sure we're always keeping you guys up to date on that. Battleborn happens to be the uh, big game right now. So, uh, of course, that'll be mainly where we're focused at, yeah, just because yeah. it's what's relevant. It's what everybody's doing and up to. It's what Gearbox is focused on right now, because battle plan every week, well, you know, that's something we're going to cover. And like you said, they they keep making adjustments, making tweaks. We'll, we'll be right there with you guys, uh, you know, feeling them out, letting you know what we think about the changes they've made. Exactly. Yeah, we'd like to thank everybody today for listening, mm. and uh, thank you for having patience with us. Once again, we're new at this. We'll get better. Uh, it's just going to take a few episodes. Yeah. I'm sure we'll look back on this one and cringe, yeah. which, we'm <laughs> which, which we may be doing right Already. now. Already. You, you might be able to tell that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, neither one of us have done anything like this before. So, like you said, we appreciate your patience. Uh, stick with us. We'll get better. We'll get with it, you know. So uh, <clears throat> you can find us on the web at... Uh, thirdshift.me. Uh, if you've got any questions for us, comments, love, hate, you know, grievances, anything like that, you can email us at info at thirdshift.me. Uh, you can find us on Facebook under Third Shift. On Twitter, we're Third Shift Me. That's Third Shift M-E. And uh, for any of the other socials, we got all kinds of stuff lined up. Danny, our social person, has just got us freaking everywhere. But for any of that, you can go to thirdshift.me. You'll find little links, little little buttons all down at the bottom there you can you can find us anywhere awesome all righty well until next time you guys don't Don't forget forget to save. save